work session to order. This is Monday, July 11, 2016, 4.30 p.m., Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Uh, we're going to uh, mix things up just a little bit tonight. Uh, I want to start first off with, uh, with one of our discussion items. It's the uh, sale of city properties. Uh, Bill, would you uh, come and uh, help us out today? Thank you. There's a group of us that have been meeting for a while um, called SURGE, which stands for Sustainable Urban Revitalization and General Empowerment. And this planning group has been meeting for the last several months to identify ways to improve in a sustainable way Burlington's neighborhoods. And we focused initially on the South Hill and still are. The philosophy guiding the group's efforts is, is holistic. And the idea is, is that we would factor in spiritual, economic, health, education, housing, public safety, relation, relationship needs, and do that in a plan of action that can improve and empower lives and rejuvenate our most critical neighborhoods. Those are lofty goals, and we, we meant them that way. and We don't view them as easy. In fact, as we've done this over a, a snail's pace, it feels like, uh, reminded of, if you know Eugene Peterson, he has a book called Perseverance is long obedience in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Quoting Friedrich Nietzsche, the essential thing in heaven and earth is that there should be a long obedience in the same direction. So we're, we're pursuing and we're determined to move forward that way. And rather than utilizing a, a shotgun approach, we're looking at uh, really focused areas within our city. And though we had the, the South Hill Association that's very active in trying to promote and develop their neighborhood, so we were working with Vince Copeland uh, in that effort and uh, want to continue that. We look for ways to address these social or soft issues, and they're very difficult to figure out ways to help folks from one stage of life to a better stage of life. A group that's been formed, Bridges Out of Poverty, is addressing really what is a significant part of what we wanted to address as well. It provides training to those low-income individuals that have a poverty frame of reference and provides them connections to others that can walk beside them as they seek to improve their lives. They have a part of it called the Getting Ahead piece, which is a 16-week training program. Their first class of that is getting ready to graduate in August. There's a second stage, the Staying Ahead piece, that um, calls them to connect, graduates to connect with two or three that could be those that would walk beside them, and there are those who are already living sustainable lives. So that brings us to uh, some of the things we'd like to see is in this bit about having both a neighborhood revitalized and people's lives changed and improved. We know housing is a key part of that. A couple of years ago, there were some big discussions here about tax abatements and. One of the things I remember this council bringing up and the mayor specifically talking about, don't, let's don't forget that we're actually talking about urban revitalization. We're trying to improve people's lives. That was somewhat an inspiration for the surge group for moving forward in the way that we're doing. We want to partner with everyone who's moving in that same direction that wants to accomplish the same things. Uh, one of the partners that we have is Housing Inc., um, part of Great River Housing and the Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission. This entity is a potential owner of real estate and developer of real estate. And where possible, uh, we want to include a prospective homeowner that would, if we're looking at a particular property and that's an opportunity for us to come in and take a property that's been abandoned, it's in really rough shape, do some significant improvement and have the person that potentially would own that home participate in that as much as possible. We want to create that sense of ownership that they have significant skin in the game. We anticipate there are other potential owner, developer, refurbishers that would participate in this kind of program because we need those lead entities that would own and actually take charge of developing. Uh, besides uh, Housing Inc., Harmony Bible Church has expressed interest. We think there's other nonprofits. Christian Action Committee is interested in with their down payment program and potentially trying to expand in some way in that, uh, that effort. Um, so we want to draw those with the same goals that we have to these efforts. 
As far as our approach would go, we are looking for single family homes that would have sufficient bedrooms, reasonable cost to maintain, along with a manageable cost to refurbish. As an example, there are a number of us that walked through two of the city's existing properties that were either abandoned or had to do with tax issues. And uh, Housing Inc, uh, Mike, and whoever that was involved in that did some estimates for the cost to refurbish those two particular properties. It was between sixty and sixty-five thousand um, dollars. If the entry costs are not too high, then that kind of refurbishing cost still results in a house that could be affordable to someone that's in the low to moderate income category. Our goal is to have that as reasonably strong uh, an entry point as possible. It matches up with what they can afford, matches up with what is a good quality of, of living, and uh, they start out with a sense of ownership. So what we're asking is that the city council designate some of the properties that it comes to own through tax delinquencies or nuisance abatement for auction as owner-occupied only properties, especially in neighborhoods such as South Hill. We feel like owner-occupied that will, that will perhaps open the door more to those who are going to live it rather than simply landlords that are trying to acquire additional properties. We ask that um, that designation and that discretion be given uh, to the city administration for determining which of these properties would be so designated. The, the challenge for us is, is there's not a one size fits all. Some of these houses are too big to fit into this program. Some are too small, the two bedroom type homes we struggled with. But I think city administration would certainly know, as we're talking back and forth about particular property, that this could work for a family and that this potentially is one that we ought to designate as we'll go to auction and we'll go to the highest bidder, but it'll be owner-occupied. Thank you. Interesting. We walked through actually four different homes um, a few weeks ago as a group and kind of looked at the pros and cons on how they fit within uh, some of the concepts that, that they're looking to try to achieve. Um, out of the four that we walked through, I think there were two of them that, that stood out as being viable for, uh, that they saw as being um, ones that could easily be do what they're trying to accomplish. The only thing that they're really asking of us to do differently than what we typically do, we do typically we put restrictions on most of the properties. Uh, most of it's just essentially to bring it up to code. Yeah. Um, they're asking us to put to consider the having a couple of them, the ones that they look at as being potentially viable to do this with, having an ad additional restriction, just saying that we would like to see those be owner occupied for the first three years. Yeah, two to three years, roughly in there. Um, just with the, the idea of trying to get them into the hands of an owner occupied as opposed to a rental. Um, some of the goals that you're looking to achieve are the idea with a home ownership that you have, a, it changes the dynamics of the home relationship for the people that live in that home and how they treat what their attitude is towards the property. It's just different when you own than when you rent. Yeah, and that pride of ownership is something that we're trying to, to see occur. Also, to create a structure that allows, uh, instead of ha if someone who's in that position where they can, af can s if the opportunity's right, can afford to get into a property, and this is for what they're looking to try to accomplish, uh, I think that you're looking at uh, probably some, trying to get some favorable financing come up with some ways to help with that down payment assistance, help people to get into a situation where they're able to build some equity into a property as opposed to renting. Um, just long-term stability for a neighborhood. Um, so we have a couple of properties, again, that we've seen that out of the ones that we've acquired through the 657A prop, I don't know if all of them are through 657A. The, the two that we've looked at, the four that you looked at all were, yeah. yeah. Uh, that we'll be bringing forward. Um, we'd like to put a cup that designation on it to, that it has to be for owner occupied for the first two to three years. It still allows it, anyone can bid on it, but the goal is just trying to build some long term stability into a neighborhood. Uh, it may mean that we get a little bit less money 
out of the, the properties because you have you've changed the dynamics of who's going to bid on it and for why but we from a staff perspective we feel that's a, it's a, a good thing for the community as a whole so it makes sense makes sense to me I, uh, <clears throat> I I think it's fantastic personally I uh, I think it's I think it's fantastic uh, who, who's who all out there is involved in this That's for me. I, I just say I, uh, again, I'm just one person, but I'm I'm really excited to hear to hear about that, and uh, it just it's just a reminder to me that that people still care uh, about their fellow man, about their community, and uh, I have no issue with it whatsoever. No, and I think I think programs and things like that, what we're talking about, is extremely important. Um, you know, there's a lot of really good people out there that just. They just can't get a property in their own, you know, in their hands. Mm -hmm. So opportunities like this, it, it's really great to see something happening like that in our community. We're trying to make it a way where they can stay there. That's mm -hmm. So it's, it's financial literacy. Can you come to the, can you come to the, yeah. just so that you're making it. I said we're trying to make this in a way that it's sustainable, that they mm -hmm. can stay in it. So it includes some training that teaches them about financial literacy, how to maintain a home. So the whole goal is is not just an in and out, but they can stay yeah, and absolutely grow, stay with the that's, property. That's really is this that's kind awesome. of modeled after Habitat for Humanity? Well, the parts that are are parts that are yeah. for the the whole thing of trying to get them to join in yeah. with the effort is a part of having more skin in the game and private ownership, plus learning how to maintain a property once they're there. Yeah, yeah. the Christian Action used to have a. a, a Kind of and, and they're very interested in joining with us on some of this. Um, they had a great follow-up program for up to 10 years. Marshall Walls would uh, uh, connect up with uh, mm -hmm. folks that were in the program. And that accountability, I think, is also an important piece, this, this continuing follow-up. Bridges believes in the same kind of follow-up and that staying ahead connection. So awesome. that's how we see those things coming together. Well, I want to commend you guys. Thank you. Thank very you. Very nice. Council, are we good? Yes. Wonderful. Check with legal and make sure it's we're good. That's kind of what we've we've been doing through this process is trying to. We've had discussions on this for what, close to a year now, I think. Um, trying to see what can we what's the right approach to do this, and, we, and we'll we'll still go through the auction process as we do this. But I think we've got an avenue that if we can get it done at the right price, it'll it'll work well. And and even if someone, I mean, I mean, their goal is they have. Uh, a plan for how that how it could be purchased and done with a renovation but if someone else comes in and buys it that's good for the neighborhood because really the, the whole idea is around anyone coming in and being able to buy it from a home ownership perspective and build Sweet. the neighbors neighborhoods up. so yeah those will come forward over the next couple of months I don't know what is timing what your timing is there but yeah. excellent thank you guys thank you very much uh, before we move forward, i got to read this. Uh, this was, uh, I've got to find out who these employees are. Uh, this was in the Hawkeye. Uh, Diane Sweden uh, sent this in. It says, great employees. The good weather in May came, <laughs> that's how long I've had this. Uh, the good weather, <laughs> pinch your Tim. The good weather in May gave me a chance to power wash and water seal our porches. Uh, on the front porch, we have swings my husband made. One needed refinished. That done, I was having a hard time getting it back on the porch. City employees could see I was having trouble. They stopped, got it on the porch, and hung it for me. The city should be proud of its, uh, of its employees. Thank you, guys. Uh, whoever knows who these city employees are, I want to find out who these employees are that helped this lady uh, get her swing back on the porch. I want to recognize you. So if somebody knows who these, uh, who these employees are, please uh, get that information back to me as soon as possible. And uh, I just. I think there's more stories like that of city employees that do things like this, but uh, that go unrecognized. And I, uh, I've been carrying you guys in my pocket since May, so I want to find out uh, who that is so I can recognize you. Uh, I had to get that out so I didn't forget it another week. Uh, next, uh, we're going to do number nine, uh, a resolution accepting design for phase five of the Riverfront Flood Mitigation Project, and then we'll start from the top and work our way down. Thanks, Jim. Charlie Nichols, city planner. I was told last time you asked Leo to come back after we could get some more public comment on this, which I'm pretty sure you'll have. We put 
a video on social media showing the proposed plan. We've had a lot of feedback on it. Good opinions, bad opinions, but a lot of feedback. Where'd you put that at? Our Burlington Community Development Department Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And then it's been shared on a number of pages as well. Steamboat Day shared it, which they have a pretty big following. So there's been a lot of people who have seen it. Definitely our most viewed post ever by far. I do have some cost and maintenance information. If you would want me to go over that now in this work session as opposed to the next council meeting. Please. So for the <laughs> splash pad, there's a lot of questions about maintenance and upfront costs. Our consultants have installed a number of these and they've given us comparable estimates. The splash plate installation would cost between $150,000 and $200,000 and that would be part of the overall figure. The maintenance ranges between $10,000 and $15,000 per year with about 3,000 to 4,000 being labor and maintenance costs and the rest being water, sewer fees, and electricity. For comparison, our current fountain we have down there ranges between 10,500 and 13,700 per year just in labor without accounting for water and electricity costs. So the splash, pay, the splash pad could be significantly cheaper than the current fountain. Uh, we have a pretty technical fountain that right now from what I've been told that requires a lot of man hours to operate it during the summer and spring year wow. uh, seasons. The large dock, which has been shown, will be part of a boating infrastructure grant, which we would want to apply for in October if we got the go ahead from you. Um, Smith Group JJR has built a few others, one in Bettendorf at the casino, and then there's on another dock in Clinton. The maintenance costs would be very small for the first 15 years. But then after 15 years, there would be some costs for rehabilitation. So you wouldn't expect very much over the first 15 years, but then you'd have what to rehab was that it. For? Uh, the floating boat dock. Okay. And then the installation of removable panels. They estimate that the entire removable portion of the wall would take about 40 hours of work for a team of eight people to install. And most floods will not require a full installation. And I'm not sure if you are aware of this or not. Do we have the overhead working? Mm -hmm. Can we put this up there? So the, the large overall plan shows losing parking in the entire center of that area, as well as changing a, a lot of other things, which would be a huge change. But as of right now, we just have money for the 2.1 acres in the yellow. So we're not going to be able to do the entire thing at once. The number of parking spaces lost in this phase would be 24, which is about 15% of the total area. So it's not going to be a large drastic change to start off with. We'll do what we can afford, and then as grant funding becomes available, we'll do more projects. It, this gives us the advantage of having some time to warm up to the project. I know that there are a lot of people who are worried about what would happen to the Memorial Auditorium or the port building if all the parking is taken out by doing it in smaller steps like this, we get the chance to do things incrementally and see if we like the direction we're moving in. Do you have any questions on this project for me? I want to thank you, Charlie, because when we left last time, I think there was a lot of confusion about what we were supposedly going to approve. But if, if what we're approving is just in yellow, I'm comfortable with that. I am not comfortable with saying we're going to approve the whole plan because I don't like the whole plan. Mm -hmm. um, I think splash pad is a, a no, no go for me. Uh -huh. And that supposed skating rink is also a no go for me. So just counsel if it, when that, when and if that comes up, you're not going to get my support on it. But if what we're asking is say we're approving what's there in the yellow, great. And I appreciate the clarification on that. And we do need some direction on that at the next council meeting. They need to start their designs for the flood wall. And what we plan to do directly adjacent to the flood wall will have a significant impact on what they put in their designs. So just that area adjacent to the riverfront, though, not the entire portion. And I have heard from a number of people about the loss of parking there. And if we're just talking about 20, what did you say? 24, 24 spaces. 24. Right. That's doable at this point. In fact, I think whenever we talk about parking, I always think then of the lot to the south of the auditorium that is grossly underutilized. And 
I think when we looked at parking in the whole area, losing 24 spots, if we do better utilization on the other lot, it will be a zero loss, actually. Am I hitting that right, or am I missing something? You're right that uh, the lots to the north and the south of that main lot are underutilized. Our parking studies show that they had a maximum 20% 20%. usage during the work week. Of course, that's not during big events right. when they're all full, but that gives you an idea that there is room for parking to shift. Yeah. One other thing I should probably mention, the fountain that's there now is shown as being removed. We're looking into if we can keep it. There's about 10 feet of space between the edge of that fountain and where the flood bowl will have to be. So it's not yet clear if the flood walls can be constructed while keeping that fountain. Do we have a, a well, for instance, when there's civic music going, um, can they restrict who parks? Do we have a policy about that or do they, is there some way we can make that, the 70 some parking spaces left for people that really need the close parking space? That's just, Something just came out of the top of my head. I don't know if that. I don't know how you're going to get that well, accomplished. I don't, I don't either. I'm just asking the question. Okay. Just for a special event? Yeah. Probably. There are people that want to come to the council meeting and want to talk about this. Uh huh. They, they, they want to express themselves. I want them to know exactly what's involved in phase five uh, of this improvement. Everything that's that's a part of that improvement mm -hmm. and what it's going to do for the riverfront and what it's going to do to the riverfront. I want them to know. Sure. And right now, I don't really know. I'm, I'm confused from what we were shown uh, last or two weeks ago and, and what you're showing tonight. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, think I really don't. With, with that, I don't know what's involved. What, yeah. what, how much money's going to be spent on it? Where the money's coming from? And all, all those kind of questions need to be answered before we vote on this. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the downfalls of doing the big overall plan up front. You don't really see the piece by piece. And I've asked our consultants to develop graphics showing what just phase five would look like in isolation without everything else around it that I think would give a much clearer idea of what would actually be done. Good. You'll have that for for the next Monday, the eighteenth. Mm -hmm. But that that phase is five point six million somewhere in that, mm -hmm. and that is strictly the the well. You have a little bit more than just the flood wall area. Yeah, the, it's the area from the overpass down to past the auditorium, and then the amount of flood wall built past the auditorium depends on where bids come in, and then we'll pick up in the next phase, continuing that wall up. Market Street. The other components, one of the things that would have a major impact on this project would be the splash pad. Mm -hmm. If you were to do that, because that's part of the infrastructure you're saying that I think that as they do the design for the fa this the main project, they're going to need to know if we're going to look at doing a splash pad because it, they're going to incorporate some of the infrastructure to make that possible is that correct or yeah they they don't have to do it but if at this time you said you were okay with the features they would try and when they're doing construction incorporate infrastructure connections for for future features so it would cut down on the cost if those were done in the future in the future and this we need to this we need to uh, decide on Monday well you're not you're not committing to doing those other things but mm -hmm. they're gonna if you're saying that you're at least willing to consider them in the future they want to make sure that they address it now have it set up that what they do bid out allows that to go in without yeah. causing a lot of significant rework of things later mm -hmm. now that that being said if the council as a whole says there's no way we want to see a splash pad here or the skating rink there's no reason for them to design for it. Mm -hmm. So that is worthy of your discussion. If, that, if that's from a council as a whole, if you don't want to see those types of features looked at in the future, they might as well drop them from the discussion. Yeah. I haven't, I just want to say this, I haven't received any support uh, for those items. Every, everybody that I've talked to that have reached out to me 
has, has said that they would rather not have those uh, have those additional uh, uh, things built into the plant. So um, I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. That's that's what I'm leaning towards because I haven't had I haven't had one person say to me yet that they that they would like to see that. <clears throat> I've actually seen quite a bit of positive things said about at least a splash pad. Just uh, that's what I've seen. I've heard some positive comments and some negative ones. <laughs> I'm not ruling it out in my mind yet. I don't know. Tell me again, what was the maintenance cost on the splash pad? Maintenance cost on the splash pad would be between ten thousand and fifteen thousand per year, with the three three to four thousand of that being labor and maintenance, and the rest being utilities. Which is and we're about the same as with the current, except it's, it's not less even, than the current fountain. Right, because that ours isn't factored. The labor and maintenance is about is over twice as much for our current fountain. <clears throat> well, I, I'm concerned from a different angle. Is one is there was a splash pad put in two years ago at at the uh, Stone Gardens, and it hasn't worked uh, since the first year. We have had as a community a pretty poor uh, performance record on our fountains on the riverfront and our fountains in the parks. Um, they, uh, the, the, I think the fountains down on the riverfront have been off more than they've been on. And, and I'm talking seasonally. I know it's seasonally, but even in season, they've been off more than they've been on. And the, uh, the private water park that's here in town, that they were given assurances that that was first rate, top notch, uh, best product on the market and they've had nothing but troubles with it because it, it was improperly designed for this climate. And I, I just want to make sure that, that uh, if it, that, that we're 100% certain that whatever company puts it in knows what they're doing. And two, I, I said before, I really don't want to see uh, us putting in projects that we're going to have annual cost involved on. And that and those numbers, I mean, fifteen thousand dollars in big picture isn't a lot, but a lot of fifteen thousand um, uh, dollar cost add up uh, pretty quick. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally opposed to it. If the public says they want it, I'm, I would vote in, for, in favor of it. But I'm not going to know until the public has had a, an opportunity to uh, to address it and then look at everything that's that's come out. So Again, the decision that's being made or being asked to be made now is not whether you're going to do, whether you're going to do that. It's phase two. As time goes phase, on, yeah, I think if you're saying that you're at least willing to consider it, uh, you may see an application that the staff works on in the future. Yes, none of these amenities right now are planned in the budget. These would all be grant applications. So. In the future, if we did want to do a splash pad grant application, it would have to come before the council to get approval for that grant application. So as we do these projects over time, you'll then have a chance to make a decision on individual features, whether or not you would like them. And I guess our biggest thing is we want to make sure that if, if there are some of these things that are just, it doesn't make sense to do, we don't want to do, we, we, we don't want to waste time on it. Yeah. If you're willing to look at it, They'll, they'll, uh, they'll move forward with those as things that they bring to you in the future when, if and when they have a grant source that they can go after to try to do the project. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the likelihood is that you're going to be able to get grant funds to do this, but I think the boating infrastructure might be a little bit more feasible f from what little I've heard. But yes, the, the things adjacent to the riverfront, including the boating infrastructure, are much more likely that we would get funding for that. The shade structures are, I think, of a, the next thing that we will be most likely to get funding for. And then the splash pad, there was a grant, but it's being reworked right now, so we'll have to see what the new criteria is when that comes out. But for Monday night, you, you anticipate having a schematic or a picture or something to show us exactly what's in that yellow, what's going to put that yellow area is going to look like. Mm -hmm. I've asked our consultants to work on one, so I think they'll have one by then. Um. And we have just uh, apparently, since I wasn't here last week when the department head meeting was, but uh, the, uh, it sounds like that even from a staff level, the boating boat ramp, there are some concerns about uh, 
that too long term, and I think those would need to be. I mean, they're they're not just the not just the um, council, not just the public, but staff too has concerns on different things on making sure that we do things that are viable and we can move forward with um, the, the ramp or the dock. The dock itself, I think, out on the out on the riverfront, they're just concerned about the the maintenance on that uh, current. Uh, some different, just different aspects of it, and I think that before that they'd want to see something done that put that permanent dock, large dock out there, that they had addressed and were satisfied with. Um, so just because it's on here, something from the uh, architects as as something, I I don't know if you'll see all of it actually come to you to to okay. be requested in the future. And <laughs> most of this stuff. This isn't the, the stuff that means anything to me. I, I'm not too much on worrying about the amenities. I, I do want the community to, you know, the things to look nice and the people to be happy with stuff. I'm more concerned about just the getting, making sure we move forward with the flood wall. Me too. That was my next comment is in relationship to that. When, when, are, when is the, the uh, uh, lift stations, uh, uh, the pump, pump stations, and that sort of stuff going to be considered? I mean, put the flood wall up and we get flooding on that side, how do we get rid of the, on the, on the left, left side, how do we get rid of that water? The same way that we do now, when we put the HESCOs up, we still, we'll have to still pump over until, is that phase two or phase, the, the third yeah, phase? The next phase will be the pumping station um, down for that section of the wall. And then this phase will be flood proofing of the Market Street lift station. So it'd be two years after where we put the pumps in um, and that, I mean, until then, we're doing it the same way we do now, where we have the several pumps set up that we pump the water over by, with, with those mobile pumps. So yeah, it's not the ideal, but we're we're not at ideal now, and it just it's not until we get through all all the phases, and that it won't it won't be a full permanent solution. And people do need to recognize that it's. That we're doing it and we have to do it in phases just by the nature of the way the funding is coming in i, I understand that but the, the the site where they showed the pump is showing a site that's going to have improvements put a, put in in phase five um why uh, that needs to be part of our consideration too i would think about putting in underground or whatever other infrastructure needs to be put they're in they're me. they're doing the infra infrastructure they need to underground to that needs to be done in order to accommodate those future lift lift stations that's that's they're they're doing things they're trying to make sure that they do it in a way that they that they don't have to redo effort I don't know if that it quite answers it but I hope we're also looking at what other cities have already done along this line, though. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you think we could learn a lot of what we should do and shouldn't do. I hope we're talking to the right people. I mean, I've seen some of it in Davenport and Dubuque and Clinton and so forth. And yeah, a lot of the inspiration for this is um, coming from that. It's coming from other cities. Basically, when we had the public meetings, the consultants would show pictures of other cities along the riverfronts to people to generate ideas and to get them thinking. And a lot yeah. of these features came from that process. satisfied sure you still Tim want to see a good breakdown of what's going to actually be done so we'll work on it all right seven days yep <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you Charlie <laughs> keep up the good work man amen to that good job all right let's uh, try to roll downhill a little bit uh, we got a proclamation of retirement Debbie Wagenbach Fantastic. We've got a couple of mayor's awards. And next we have a public hearing consideration of the sale of property locally known as 925 Wells Court, City of Burlington, Iowa. Mr. Chesney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, This is a, a, ban or a vacant uh, property. It was a house we acquired through the 657A process. It was in a 
a very dilapidated state and was uh, demolished. Uh, we've had interest from a neighbor to the west uh, that owns both homes there of purchasing the property and has made a uh, offer to purchase the property. Um, haven't heard from, and we did send notice to everyone else within the neighborhood uh, within 200 feet and haven't heard from anyone else. So currently we just have the one bid from the neighbor to the west uh, to purchase the property, expand their yard area. It is, yep, the city did demo it. Any questions? No. Okay. All right, uh, next is public hearing, consideration of a sale of property locally known as 1014 Court Street, City of Burlington, Iowa. This is another vacant property. Uh, home was demoed on it a number of years ago. Um, we've been maintaining it um, for the last couple of years. Uh, the property owner, again, to the west has expressed interest in it and has made a, a minimum offer to purchase the property. Um, again, did send notice to everyone within the neighborhood. It has a very steep terrain uh, from Court Street up to the north, uh, kind of a hillside there, so it is difficult um, for use. Uh, would probably be best used by the neighbor to the west uh, who has submitted the offer expand their uh, yard area as well. You guys have any problems with that? Uh, okay. What's the, what was the size of, uh, what, was the, what was the size of the one on Court Street? I, can't. Uh, I believe it's uh, 40 by 120. I'd have, I don't have it exactly in front of me, but I believe 40 by 120 approximately. Either one of these lots is buildable or no? They, they would be buildable. They'd be very difficult lots. The other one is uh, smaller, and this one, just with the train, um, that'd be very difficult to gain access to. You guys have any problems? No. Okay. All right, next we have a public hearing, consideration of an ordinance vacating and selling a portion of Gordon Street right-of-way located west of Baumberger Street and a portion of Baumberger Street right-of-way located south of Monroe Street. First reading on this. Mr. Tisla. Uh, these two right-of-ways were requested to be vacated um, by uh, check here, the owner at 20, 2005 Cliff Road, Jerry and Rebecca Sherwood. Um, they're currently wooded areas. Uh, the, Gordon Street right away is essentially their driveway, a private drive with uh, no other access to other properties. And uh, the Bomberger right away uh, is just a, I guess, tree lined uh, hillside. Uh, they do own all the property adjacent to it on the west side. They own the, the three lots adjacent to it, as well as uh, these lots and the lots to the north of uh, Bomberger Street as well. Again, we did send notice to all the neighbors. Um, this did go to the Planning Commission on June 21st, and they voted 4 to 0 to approve vacating the described right away. Um, Gordon Street is a dead end roadway that only serves the applicant's property at 2005 Cliff, and Bomberger is an unused and unmaintained right away with lack of ability for future travelway access through the right away. And the applicant has uh, expressed a desire for ownership and maintenance of the right of ways that are of no use to the city. So. Do you have any problems with that one? No. No. Okay. Uh, the next one is public hearing consideration of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 2635 Mount Pleasant Street from C2 General Commercial to R4 Multifamily Residential Zoning District. First reading on that one, Mr. Tisdale. This property is zoned um, here with the hash marks is zoned C2. It's Orchard uh, Gardens, Orchard Meadows is to the east of it. Um, but this property is zoned C2 General Commercial for uh, some reason. Looking back in our files, it, um, it was previously approved uh, in 2001 to construct 15 condo units on the lot by the City Council, and the property was zoned General Commercial Expanded Zoning Classification, um, which through the various zoning code changes and updates is no longer a zoning district. Um, so the Someone else has purchased the property and is desiring to build the, if you can see, kind of the three um, 
groups of boxes, three more uh, three-plex apartment buildings on this site. Um, so our zoning code would, requ would require a residential zoning in order to do that. Um, so that's what they're seeking. Again, it is uh, R4 to the east and to the south with uh, lower housing to the south and Orchard Meadows to the east um, and then general commercial to the west and to the north uh, with the Burlington B Stadium just in the northwest corner of your picture there. So this did go to the Planning Commission again on June 21st. They voted 4-0 to zero to recommend approval of the rezoning uh, based on the existing use of the property as residential. Um, previous approval by the city uh, under a, a no long, now a no longer zoning designation uh, request the applicant and following the future land use map designation as residential. Do you guys have any issues with that? Yes. On um, uh, council, a few months back, maybe eight or nine months back, we had a, a property that uh, fronted on uh, Mount Pleasant Street that uh, a developer wanted us to do the same thing. Uh, converted from C, C2 to, uh, to an R4. And uh, I think we decided as a council it was better suited for uh, commercial use, uh, with commercial on both sides of it. Um, I'm not opposed to the uh, to development on the back two thirds of the property, but I think the, the front third ought to uh, uh, remain uh, commercial keeping with, consistent with the uh, with that neighborhood I know there's some some R2 in there but if you drive down if you drive through there you'll see it's it's out of place um, and uh, it just seems to be better suited for uh, for commercial development and uh, it looks like the developer has no plans for uh, putting uh, housing uh, up on the street I think it would probably be difficult Ooh, I'm going blind be difficult to uh, uh, probably uh, to uh, sell housing projects in that area. I would uh, hope that we could encourage the developer before we approve this to uh, to divide that off and, and make that front portion to, to remain C2 and just rezone the back uh, two thirds or three quarters, whatever that is, that's necessary for the housing. I wouldn't want to do that unless the guy developing would be in favor of that because I'd sure hate to screw up his project for an unknown. I mean, and maybe he wouldn't mind that at all. That would be fine. I, I agree with you on that, Tim. I, I think uh, I think that would. Uh, I remember the other deal. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was across the street. That wasn't on the other side of the street. No, it was, was it on the same side. Right Sorry, can you point to where that other property this, was? This lot right, right here. There. That's where the four um, birds. Right. Yeah. Set. Yeah. I'm with you, Bob. I, I don't they want to put it. I think I want to mess it up. That's the thing. Don't mess it up. I understand where you're coming from. Though. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this meeting from my house, gentlemen, lady. Appreciate it. I'll be watching. Uh, I agree with you on that, Tim. I 100%. I, we can contact him and at least inquire what his thoughts are on that. Pardon me. We'll contact the applicant and yeah. see what his thoughts are on it at least. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else on this one? Satisfied? Public hearing consideration plans and specs for 2016 former dresser ran site cleanup project. This is the Dresser ran site there uh, at the bottom of uh, eight, or intersections of Central and Washington and Agency Street. Um, been working with Impact 7G on the um, assessment of the site. Uh, we did apply for a brownfield cleanup grant for the site and were unsuccessful, um, though we did get a assessment grant for the community. Um, the cleanup grant was not successful, so um, we had this discussion previously about uh, applying for that before moving forward and uh, they put together a, a bid packet, a project manual for the cleanup of the site. Uh, so this is approval of that. Um, a couple of notes on it. It is a 90 day um, cleanup project. 
um, get the dates here. They're looking to have a pre-bid meeting um, on July 26 with uh, sealed bids accepted on August 4th, pending approval of these plans and specifications. And then the 90 day cleanup period. Uh, we did add this to the TIF as part of the TIF projects um, when that was amended, the urban renewal plan. So um, there's anything you wanna add or? Yeah, we're, with the cleanup there, that'll, I think that's to, t they'll take out the concrete, it'll get pulverized and removed. Uh, the piles of bricks that are in there will be removed with, as part of this project and it will get put back to grass on both the east and west side of the tracks or northeast and southwest side of the yeah. tracks or however yeah. you call it. Um, part of the cost and concern will that there will be some remediation but for the most part they'll be doing a, a cap on that in a manner that is satisfactory for DNR purposes. Um, excavating the soil and then they'll excavate a portion of soil but but the any the contaminants that are below whatever level that is and I'm not exactly sure what that is in the specs but it's to it's they've done this in coordination with setting up these specs to to meet standards for uh, DNR what DNR would have and allow for potentially redevelopment in the future uh, for commercial, commercial I think or industrial it's, use yeah. no residential no residential. We'd have to do a, a much more extensive cleanup to make it is, suitable is there for that. A capped well there? There, there yeah, is. there is a well we capped a, a few years ago as yeah. well, which would just remain capped. Yep. But it is commercially available. It would be available for commercial use in the future. Um, we one we talked about whether to put that leave that with a cement cap on it or go to grass and I, my preference was just to go to grass so it'd be a natural uh, more of a it, a nicer setting yeah. uh, if somebody does come in and want to develop it in the future it's going to need new they they would need to have different concrete than what was there currently anyway it's just not right. it's way too uneven to be able to be used the, the way it's set up they, so. they have to remove a lot of it just to get to the yep. soil as well so we can get rid of the weed problem too, right? And there's a couple of buildings and still smaller structures that'll go away as well. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah in the southwest corner? Yeah. Yep. And I think that a here. future project that will be going on in this area too, Cascade, the uh, Central Street overpass, there, there's some, some the, wing wall. the wing wall that that is there needs some repair work done to it, maybe more than one wing wing wall too. I'm not really sure, but but we're that will be a, a, a separate project that'll be done here over the I don't know how as time allows from engineering to get bids bid specs together. Um, but again, as Eric mentioned, this would be paid for. Ideally, what we'd be looking at is we get bids in and get the work accomplished. Uh, we'll incur the expense and then we'll certify that as a TIF debt and that's been built in to make sure that we can afford to do that with as we've looked at uh, the projects that are going on using TIF funding it fits within our repayment structure and if the bids are too much we can always say no right? we certainly can yeah. we know how to do that uh, I think the estimate, I don't know if you have a preliminary estimate on that. When we'd done this a couple of years ago, we were looking in the 260,000 range. Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah. know if, from other things that we've seen, we've, we've seen some other preliminary estimates that they've put together that we thought were pretty high. Yeah. And I guess we'd be hopeful that that would be the same here, but we'll see when, when we get costs in. Okay. There will be a representative from Impact 7G here on Monday to answer any other questions okay. as well. Good. Questions? Okay. Oh. Thank you, guys. All right, here we go. <coughs> Resolution approving a 28-year amended agreement between the City of Burlington, Iowa, and the Southeast Iowa Regional Airport Authority for shared services and continuing operation of maintenance of airport facility. We talked briefly about this two weeks ago. Who's presenting this? Did, 
I think the, the one change was the, or the question was the aeronautical need. I think, I guess, do you guys have any further question Basi or? Let me ask you this. Basically, the agreement is the same as what we've had, except for the armory. Is that correct, Mary? That is correct. There are some other wording changes, but they're just wording changes. Uh, that is the change that was done in here, and, it, and that came out of the discussion that was held a year and a half ago um, from between council and the airport commission um, on how to handle this long term. Uh, we tried to, with the renewal of this coming up this July one. We thought we'd incorporate by the time we got to anything that was workable that had been through the different entities. Uh, we decided to incorporate the any potential transfer of land over into this. Um, since I wasn't here two weeks ago, I don't know what you have for concerns, but it does. this does lay out um, the transfer of ownership and then us being able to, to lease back the property and use it uh, subject to their permission if we go to do any different things than what we are currently doing on site. Um, and it also lays out uh, how costs would be done on the demolition of the building in the future and puts the responsibility for the maintenance and upkeep on us for what, while we're using it. I guess the question was, uh, Stephanie, was uh, what did the attorney say about that language? Is it, was it okay? Steve's comments. I mean, he was thinking we needed to have more specific language than just them being able to say we need to tear it down. That if there was an FFA requirement, I think that was one of his comments. Does anybody have that email? Or I don't have it. I didn't print it out or anything. Um, he just thought the term was way too very open ended, and that we would be liable still for fifty percent of the cost, basically with an open-ended, they could say, let's tear it down and we're responsible. He just felt we, we were too exposed, basically. But at the same time, that is an attorney speaking, wanting clarification on things. The aer aeronautical need, I think that mm -hmm. it's kind of up to you how satisfied you are having that without further delineation, as, as mentioned from the attorney. Um, do, you, do you want a better clarification of what that language is or you feel that it's acceptable with how it is here? I read the whole thing. I didn't see anything that bothered me. Of course, I'm not an attorney either. I, I guess I wasn't con really concerned about having it written in there with a, based off of aeronautical need. but I just Yeah, and they're fine with it if the council wants it. I think they just wanted to make sure that you guys understood that if they really, you know, it doesn't have to be a forced requirement on them if, unless we put that in writing and that we'd still be responsible for 50% of it. Okay. I'm all for demolishing the building. We can't act on that yet, though, can we? <laughs> no. Darn. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. <clears throat> Speaking of demolition, mm -hmm. yes, I brought it up. <laughs> I had a uh, conversation with uh, a uh, former guardsman who was there when they made the move to the new uh, facility. He said he was extremely surprised that they didn't offer to uh, tear that down, and he thinks we should continue to pursue them. You need to have the guard do it. Pardon me? You need to have the guard. Have the guard tear it down. I mean, they are in that business. I'll start my letter writing campaign now. I discouraged you before. <laughs> yeah, you you went after after that a couple of years ago. I didn't pursue it a couple of years ago, but I still have all the letters that okay. the chief sent. Um, I was a little discouraged after I read them, but now that I've got new information, I think I'll. You'll try it. again. Okay. Well, how crucial is that building to what our needs are? That. Who knows what we have stored in there? We have some sewer pipe in there, and I think we have HESCO barriers in there. Correct. And I don't know how much space that that takes up. Um, but uh, we'd have to find another location for, the, for that. Um, 
we don't want either of those items stored outside. Correct. But if it does, if it were torn down, we just have to figure out where, where else to put it. The building certainly is. Not and if, beautiful. And if well, you, you feel it's room there, I mean, you can always uh, start storing cakes from the sewer plant there too. So. <laughs> no, talking. let's not do that. <laughs> oh, I see Don shaking his head. I'm just trying to get people talking about it. <laughs> get rid of it sooner than later. It looks terrible. God awful ugly building. Needs major work on the outside. Charlie, okay, what's next here? Listen to Charlie here a second. Charlie Walsh uh, happened to be chairman of the airport authority. Uh, if the land is being transferred to the authority, I had a problem with it coming back to you all saying that we're going to have to tear it down. I mean, it won't be yours after it's been transferred. Now, I know the authority, if the airport authority goes away, it all comes back to you anyway. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. But with the building, you know, I've never seen a lease or whatever you want to call it have the leasee have the permission to not tear it down. You know where I'm coming from? You can look oh, dazed. Well, if I'm calling you 100%, Charlie. <laughs> the land will be the authorities, and the building on the land goes with the building. If the airport has to tear it down for FAA reasons. We own the land now. Why would we ask C permission to tear it down? Because you want us to pay for 50% of it. Well, that's true. But, you know, if we can get the guard to pay for it, that'll save you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's, that's why I'm saying that, yeah. uh, you know, I have no problem with it going the way it is. If the FAA says it's got to go, we have to say it's got to go. Well, that's pretty much what the... And that's what it says yeah. now, right. But I have one more little problem, the trees. What a disgrace. I've heard that more in the last two months, you know. And I know in the lease it says you can have logs there but sure looks awful. And the forestry department used to hide them behind Dankwood Park and Ball Diamonds, and now they're open to the first thing people come in, fly in. What are you doing? I think it's, like I said, a disgrace. Yeah, I think, I, I think what's the ash tree problems over with, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're not gonna use that anymore, are they? We have mulch there, but yeah, most we won't, we might have a tree here and there just as people remove it. But yeah, a lot of this is due to the ash. We've had a lot of contracts this past summer, and we did storm out at the manor site that we had to remove them from the manor site. The, the, they've been there the last five plus years, so we had to remove those when that was sold. But we would imagine once the ash is done, hopefully this fall, or should be complete with most of that, that there, it won't be what it is now. I'll be right behind you on that one, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, something not clear. Hear, hearing that, then are you okay with us saying that we won't pay for half of the demolition then? If the guard tears it down. No, I mean, if the guard doesn't tear, I mean, if you have to go but, to bids to tear it down. No, I think that's part of your responsibility. Okay. Any other questions? Not for me.
Okay. Thanks. Any Any concerns? Anything else, Mary, that you that's want to add? Just how that's set up is all a matter of pure negotiation on it. When it comes to demo cost, is between the airport commission and, and you all as a council, and who's comfortable with what? Uh, technically, they could say we want the, we'd like to see the land come to the airport commission, but we'd like to see it come clean. I mean, they, they, they could ask that too. So, I mean, there's it's a matter of what's the right compromise between the two entities, and that's that's purely between your two groups as as boards as to what you feel is acceptable as a compromise language on. Shared we're cost. We're and 50, 50%. Yep, that's how it's set up here. If it, and but that's certainly, if you're not comfortable with that and say that that's absolutely not right, you could push back and try to make it an adjustment to it. But that's again, that's a policy thing. Okay. Next item: resolution amending the encroachment policy for the city of Burlington. Uh, and I think this is what. This is all of the cafe. Yeah, cafes yep. and dealing with sidewalk cafes. On page four, um, item four uh, is a new section that lists uh, sidewalk cafes. Before, uh, they kind of fell in between a temporary encroachment and a permanent encroachment, and there's uh, some confusion on where they'd fall and what the requirements were. So, uh, did some research and uh, brought it before the planning commission as well, and uh, came up with a, a sidewalk cafe uh, section to their encroachment policy uh, that lays out specifically outdoor uh, seating for restaurants or adjacent uses, uh, um, what their requirements are. So on page four and then on page eight and nine, it lists what the requirements are for sidewalk cafes. Um, this was set up as a um, kind of evaluate at the end of the year uh, type thing and um, we'll come back next spring if there's changes that need to be made mm -hmm. or other changes to the encroachment policy as well. So. Um, Intended to hopefully be a benefit, get more people outside and uh, more active downtown uh, for using the, the public spaces and uh, evaluate at the end of the year and see if anything else needs to be changed. But this allows uh, sidewalk cafes to go to for approval uh, to the city manager, similar to temporary encroachments and vertical encroachments. Um, so there's not the 30 to 60 day wait that a permanent encroachment has oftentimes. Um, and then lay out specific requirements for those. Okay. Any comments from current downtown businesses? Um, I haven't heard anything, and Steve Brevert's here. Um, it's one thing, hopefully it'll be an easier process for people to go through. Right. Um, there's really only one business downtown that this affects right now and that would be Uptown Ivy and, and Martha was at the planning commission meeting and, and, and came up with a few suggestions of her own um, and the, the commission I, or, or you missed that one I think. Yeah. Um, and the commission accepted those and, and I think everybody was happy with it. Okay. Good. Good. Steve, are you, are you familiar with, just because I happen to be up in Washington this weekend, uh, they have, there's a cafe there that has a, a WDG, piece out. Uh -huh. Would that fit within this standard, the way they've done that? It's been a while since I've been there. Because so that's, that's separate from say. the building, but it's out into that little island that, with the way the it's, sidewalk it's, it's juts out. It's bump out. And, and it would be similar to what the, the former Penny's building is. Oh, in terms of the bump out, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, because we have that on a number of in a number of places, and I I, I don't have it, the proposed ordinance in front of me. The this language. one says it should be adjacent to the building. But so it wouldn't allow it quite the way they've yeah, done it. Yeah, that's something we could look at a little bit more. I, because I know there's been a couple questions like, could it be out closer to the curb so that so that people walk alongside the building? Yeah, that's that's how they have it set up there. Yeah, it wouldn't be allowed if there's alcohol sales there, but right, um, that'd be something we could look at. Right now, it says adjacent to the building. I think there's a couple of downtown uh, uh, Iowa City there. That way you can walk between the building and the, and the right. outdoor seating yeah. facility. And, uh, yeah, I think it's it's kind of site specific. I think um, in Washington, that's where there's there's a lot of unused space on that corner, mm -hmm. so it made sense. You know, I I think that'd be preferable to say. You know, depending, and I think I even talked to Charlie about that when it said adjacent to the building. Does that mean? 
right up against it because we do have a couple cases like that um, by the art center is one of them. Right, right. They're, they're not serving really much food outside, but uh, um, there's actually more seating area, potential seating area there than there is on the sidewalk. That's something we could look at on a case by case basis. And, yeah. and so this is something we could evaluate again. Yeah. As, yep. Like you say, in January. Yeah, if we get applications, we could certainly look at those yeah. if they're requesting yeah, something think, different than what our I think policy treating it like a pilot project is a good idea. Yeah. And, and, you know, we have the potential, we have a few people looking to open restaurants and, and eating establishments downtown. Yeah. So um, we hope this encourages more of it. Thank you, Steve. I like these sidewalks. These yeah, I do too. Very nice. I do too. In the summer. I, I don't like to eat outdoors, but I like the idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it attracts people, in other words. Yeah. All right, moving, <laughs> moving to consent agenda. Nuisance abatements. I think there's four pages of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every time I look at that. <coughs> Some of the same people keep coming back. All right, here comes our financial person to talk about interloan agreement from the general fund to the tax increment fund. Yeah, this we approved the fiscal year 16 transfer just last month, so now we're gonna get on the cycle of each fiscal year approving them in July. And this is just to cover administrative and attorney costs associated with our TIF, TIF activity through the year. And there's no real magic to the $20,000 figure. Uh, we we did want to put it at a figure that was not that was high what, that was high enough to cover a portion of cost, but not out of line with what we actually spend. Mm -hmm. uh, I think last year's when we had the 25,000. If you were to put the, look at the time and effort that we put into TIF-related projects, that does not in any way cover the time and effort that went into them because we did put a lot of time into it. And our, I think our attorney costs alone were 25,000. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we put in a number here, it's it's not designed to be an inflated one. We're trying to get something that at least covers a portion of our costs for running it, looking at doing TIF projects. So this will be an annual thing. We're just <clears throat> getting it started for this next fiscal year. It's one of those things I trust that you guys know what you're doing. Well, and again, doing having a and having an active TIF, it doesn't come without. Yeah. There's a cost to it to, right. to do it, and this is reflective of if you're going to do something and have a cost, it should try to at least cover a portion of its cost. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Okay, guys. All right, the next two go together. Uh, Agreement between the city of Burlington and Klinger and Mike Nelson and Four Seasons and uh, also the maintenance and operation of public infrastructure, seventh edition of Westbrook Estate. All, that all goes together. Yeah, and the second of those, uh, Ryan had, had presented to the council last December, I think, somewhere in there for uh, recommending approval. And at that time that he was talking about having that be contingent upon getting some testing results back on the street because um, he didn't have those results back and council member scott you asked that we just wait until we get those results back well we got results back and there were some of the air air entrainment is that the right word the amount of air that was in it uh, didn't meet uh, recommended specs and SUDIS has a standard in it if if you've adopted SUDIS, which we have uh, for a recommended penalty for having that. Now, we've never charged a, a penalty in the past on a residential subdivision where the, those streets have come back to us, even though we have it written within our, our policies to do it. And as we talked with the developers about what that, that penalty figure in there, they had some concerns about being the first ones to have been charged on this, I think, um, and having the standard held. And it's not something that has commonly been done across the state. As I've talked with other communities, very few have something like this. Um, some of them will have a performance and maintenance bond that they have, uh, that they make as a requirement for any subdivision, which may be something that we want to look that we look at in the future, Nick. Um, so, 
to try to address the same type of thing from a different perspective. That's a good idea. Um, we did work with the developers and came up with a with these the the first agreement that is taking that nineteen thousand dollar penalty and putting it into a, essentially putting it into a side fund. They're saying that you know if if a, something does come up and you do see the problem has occurred in the first well about five years that that was put into place September I think and so if you have this effective agreement now in July for four years you're going to get about five years after it was put in place um, if you do see those problems come up and it delineates what the problems are and our engineering department looked through this and felt pretty comfortable with it the develop the developers feel comfortable with the, the criteria that are outlined in here uh, they'll essentially give us a $19,000 towards our repair, which is what the SUDA standard is designed to do, is to cover our costs. Uh, they feel that they weren't, I mean, they aren't that, they weren't that far out of, out of spec, and that, and, and really that 19000 if there's a major problem, it isn't going to cover uh, the whole cost. But this, the penalty is there to say that there's the potential that you may have a problem and to try to get to it. Um, if there isn't a problem in the four years, we turn the money back over to them. And they, they feel that, that given the, everything else and it being so minimally out of, out of spec that they, they don't think that there will be a problem, but they, are, they have been willing to put the money up. And if there is a problem developed, that they would pay that to us. So we're accomplishing what is written in our specs. Uh, they do under, have an understanding during this discussion. This is kind of the... The manner that we're moving forward with looking at the SUDAS in here uh, with future developments but again I think that there's another thing that we do want to look at with that performance and maintenance bond and look at it from a different perspective on how to try to get at it and that that's I think for on a larger term basis uh, that's a better route at least from what I've seen for what other communities have done around the state though we may may need to have some more discussion about it is that fair? Nick, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, well, I talked to Ryan and <laughs> Burlington City Council, Nick McGregor. Um, I talked to Ryan, uh, the city engineer, about the condition of the road. He recommended acceptance um, of the property. Okay. Uh, didn't have any cause for concern right away. So everything seemed to be. Okay. Visually okay. Okay. I drove in the street. It looks good to me, Jim. That's <laughs> out there today. Uh, you know, I've, I've learned a lot of things since I've been on council. How do we <laughs> test low air entrainment? And what, what, how do you do that? I wish I could tell you. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> Brian, can you tell me? <laughs> he will. Yeah, I do. I, I, like I said, I've learned so many things that. Brian Bross, Klinger & Associates. I live at 1703 Group Street. Um, air entrainment uh, is a measure of the air that's put into the solution of the concrete mixture. And it's actually tested by putting it in a, what we call an air pot. It's a, about a unit weight measure of about a, um, a quarter of a cubic foot, or about a half a cubic foot of material. And we actually press air into it and we measure and it's cal it's a calibrated thing that gets done right there during the placement of the, of the concrete Ready for it yeah so yeah as your cement truck comes up and as it starts to dump in you'll take a, a sample out of it right so we take a sample and we we actually take a sample uh, for air entrainment we actually take a sample for slump which is kind of a rudimentary measure of viscosity and then we collect fresh samples for compression <laughs> strength later so we don't have to core a hole in the street to find out actually how strong yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, so then it, it, how, at the time they did it, you knew that this wasn't Well, I think, that, I think there was a dis, um, probably a misunderstanding with the contractor, uh, with the material tester on site, and, and what the city would accept. The range in the SUDOS is 6 to 10%, and we actually had 5.7. I see. And so, so I think one of the larger benefits out of the process that we've gone through to talk with the city and communicate is uh, better communication up front on what the acceptance standards yeah. are, yeah. pre-construction meeting, making sure the contract no, contractors know exactly what they're expected to do, um, and 
there are a number of different tests that go on during placement of a, of a, of a infrastructure like a street. Some are qualitative, some are quantitative. This happens to be a quantitative and our concern was we're hanging $19,000 on a few fractions of a percent of mm -hmm. something that is, is really, that seems really rough. So I think the larger solution is we have, uh, we have a situation I think we've already been able to implement with the same developer uh, for other streets that uh, going forward we have a better communication, how the city practices and how, what they'll accept and what they won't. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I learned right. something. You're getting so smart, Jim. You're going to be dangerous. <laughs> this could screw up your golf game. You're going to be thinking about air and concrete issues. Oh, boy. How are you okay here, Mr. Scott? Ms. Wilson? Yeah. Mr. Bowman? Okay. Yes, I'm fine. Okay. And these next three are related. Just I'm correct. A resolution approving energy efficient plan agreement between City of Burlington and Interstate Power. This is for the uh, charging stations, a, a couple at the college and one at hy V. two at hy V, I guess. Two at hy V and two at SEC. Um, Alliant would be writing a check to us for $25,000. Um, those charging stations, I think, are eight to $9,000 each. Um, so for the, the one on the two at High V High V would cover the difference between the grant amount, five thousand dollars per, and the eight to nine thousand at a charging station cost, um, and the SEC would be responsible for their pro rata shares. Um, ours for our charging station, which would be located at the parking lot down here at Third and Washington, or is that right? Second. I hate remembering streets. Um, we would be responsible for that, and that would come out of uh, the Renewable Energy Commission. We put, we, they have a set aside where we, we put aside 5000 a year, is that correct? And they've built up a few thousand dollars. About, are they sitting around 12000 or so now? Yeah. Um, and they'd use that set, set of funding to do it. Each entity has taken on responsibility for covering the electricity costs. Um, I think that we're looking at I was hoping that somebody from Renewable Energy would be here, uh, but uh, apparently not. Um, they are looking at the idea, and I, I don't know if, the, I know they've talked with Braden, but I don't, since I don't have, I'm not Braden and I'm not them, them, I don't know exactly what was said. I don't know, Nick, if you have some wording on how they've talked about for marking that, putting signage up on those. I discussed with Braden about putting up signage and they hadn't spoken yet okay. on, to, to what he needs to post. Because I, so I think he, what they're... He's, he understands that he, signage isn't going to be provided, but as to what is going to be said. I think they're, they're, they want some signage up because I think what they want to be able to do is have that be a free spot, which we're willing to do, but have some time limitation for how long they can be there. I think a full chart, or they're looking at a four hour uh, charge so I think that's kind of the time frame, but again, I'm not on the Renewable Energy Commission. I don't know exactly how their conversations have gone. They're looking at trying to have some wording on signage that they can get turnover on, on vehicles that do use it. But uh, as you look at through the language here, it does talk about uh, Alliant wants to see, get some, some level of idea of how much these are being used. So that's a lot of what the verbiage is in there. We have the, the maintenance that goes with it that we'll have to cut, that renewable energy will be responsible for, for taking care of. Um, but they, there, this is a, a spot they want, they do want to use this as a data collection point. So they'll, Alliant will be seeing how much these do get used over time. But we also have to provide enforcement in case somebody parks in that spot that doesn't. Yes. Yeah. You know, doesn't really belong yep. there. Get your electric car. Well, that's right. I gotta get one. Yeah. That's not. Or your motorcycle. All right. Resolution approving lease. We could do like Indianapolis. Not only have the charging station, but also have the car. <laughs> oh. There you go. You can go in and uh, pay a nominal amount. Really? And then right. unplug okay. the car, take the car, and go somewhere else. They got bicycles and do the same thing. Wow. How much does that cost? I don't know. I can't. 
do it. It's, 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 I've heard pretty inexpensive. They've got all kinds of those very smart electric cars. Yeah. I'll stick with this for now. <laughs> and lastly, on the consent agenda, resolution approving lease of two Toro Greenmaster 3150 green mowers, greens mowers for Flint Hills Golf Course. Four year lease. We currently have our current lease expired uh, July 1. Uh, that was, uh, actually, I see, need to update the date here. That was done in 2012. So, um, so this is another four year lease. Uh, we had uh, 16,500 budgeted in, in our uh, line item uh, for the annual payment. Um, the price uh, that we're, we got from Toro was, or MTI, uh, was 15,592. So, about a thousand dollars under what we had estimated based on the previous lease terms and amount. Um, these are very critical items for the golf course, um, so we recommend continuing to lease those two Toro mowers. And they get used a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Questions? Council, if you're going to rent a golf course, you got to have. Them. At least if you're going to have a quality golf course. Yeah. Appointments, uh, Animal Hearing Board, uh, Tim Goodwin has expressed an interest in serving. Uh, the two, Owen Sloan and Elizabeth Van Fleck, want to be reappointed to Economic, Devise, Advisory, Economic Development Advisory Committee. And uh, Joanne Bauer would like to be reappointed to Riverfront Advisory. Are you okay with that? Questions? All right. Comments, Council? Hearing none? None? Mm, Anything else? No, well, so the weekend was really busy. Yeah. I don't know quite how many people showed up for each event that I went to. I know the symphonic blast was really busy there was a lot of people it there was very nice oh yeah and it was it was lovely before that was the, the wood flock and i was there early so i don't know how many people ended up showing up because i had to leave for that was at the bees park right yep it was really neat the bands they had so good it's a good weekend good busy weekend lots of stuff outside yeah it's a beautiful week weekend too wasn't it Mr. scott do you think I was out walking um, yesterday, actually, and I walked on a couple of the new seal-coated streets. Uh, th those are really nice, a whole lot better than the old dusty uh, that we used to have. In my discussion with engineering, it's been a way better process than it has been in years past with yeah. the cut, crushed pea gravel. Yeah. That limestone created so much dust. We to my knowledge, haven't had a complaint about the dust. As long so as it holds up good. as well, it should be okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Manager, anything? After being gone two weeks, I've just been trying to get through stuff, and I've got a cold, and I haven't really hard, haven't really wanted to think today. So, good time to have a council meeting. Yes. Uh, no, I don't have anything. Chief. Just very briefly, I just wanted to thank the community as a whole. I mean, the last couple of days, the outpouring of support has been unbelievable. Oh, that's good. You know, for the local police departments, the cards, the letters, the flowers, the gifts, the, the food especially, that's always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I can attest to that. But, no, in all seriousness, for the local community and the local police department, I just can't say thank you enough. So we appreciate it. Good. 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 Okay. We're adjourned. Yay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. <coughs> <coughs>